The a6700 is Sony's latest camera and it's pretty impressive for its size, but if you're actually considering buying one, you clicked on the right video because you might not want to after this. So the Sony a6700 is Sony's latest APS-C crop sensor camera. And one of its main selling points is that it can shoot 4K 120, which sounds amazing considering cameras like the a7 IV, which I'm filming on now, can only shoot up to 4K 60. But it's actually not that impressive when you look into it. If you wanted to shoot 4K 120 on the a6700, you're gonna have a 1.5 times crop on top of the 1.5 times crop for being an APS-C camera. So if you're shooting with something like a 35 millimeter lens, this is gonna be equivalent to a 50 millimeter on a crop sensor camera like the a6700. But now if you switch it into 4K 120, you're gonna get another 1.5 times crop, bringing in that 50 millimeter or initially that 35 millimeter lens to something around 78 millimeters, which is crazy because you go from a lens that's a 35 millimeter focal length all the way up to something that's 78 millimeters. You probably won't be using 4K 120 often, especially if you're using tighter lenses like a 35, 50, 85 lenses like that. Now you do get Sony's latest processor with AI features like the Sony ZV-E1. So you get things like frame stabilizer, auto reframing, and you also get better auto focusing because you have AI pose estimation, which is gonna give you improved auto focusing. If you are filming video, you do have the ability to import LUTs on your a6700, which is a feature that I wish the a7 IV had instead of using something like an external monitor. You can see your LUTs on your footage while you're recording. And the a6700 is in a more compact form factor than Sony's a7 lineup, so you still get a super powerful camera in just a smaller body. So these are essentially the features that make the Sony a6700 impressive and different from the rest. But for an extra $500, you can get a used Sony a7 IV, which is gonna be a better camera with more impressive specs for your money than the Sony a6700. Now sure, one of the biggest issues with the Sony a7 IV is that it has a crop when shooting in 4K 60, but kind of the only feature that people really hate about the a7 IV. Everything else on the a7 IV is amazing. It shoots at 33 megapixels, where the a6700 shoots at 26 megapixels. It's a full frame camera, not an APS-C or crop sensor camera, so you have better low light performance, more depth of field, no crop factor, and you can use full frame lenses. You don't have to worry about doing math when you're buying lenses. If your lens says 35 millimeters, you're getting a 35 millimeter lens or focal length. You're not gonna have any crop when shooting in video modes unless you're shooting in that 4K 60. It shoots 4K, but that 4K is actually downsampled from a 7K sensor, whereas the a6700 shoots 4K, but it's downsampled from a 6K sensor. So the footage coming from an a7 IV is going to be a tad sharper than the a6700, even though they both shoot at 4K. Both cameras have five access in-body image stabilization, also known as IBIS, but the a7 IV is going to perform better because it has 5.5 stops of compensation, whereas the a6700 only has five stops of compensation. However, the a6700 also uses AI features to stabilize your footage, so who knows which one is actually better. The a7IV's buffer depth is also insane. So if you wanted to just hold down that shutter button and just keep firing photos, you're gonna be able to get 10 frames per second out of the mechanical and electronic shutter. But before hitting a cooldown period or your buffer, you're able to take 826. On the a6700, you can do the exact same thing. You can set it into continuous drive mode, but you're able to shoot at 11 frames per second, so it's a little bit better than the a7 IV, but that cooldown period or that buffer period also comes a lot earlier, so you'll get that at about 59 raw photos. So 828 raw photos before you hit a buffer coming from the a7 IV, and on the a6700, 59 raw photos before you hit that buffer or that cooldown period. 
Day 7-4 also has two card slots. One is a CF Express Type A, which also doubles as an SD card slot, and the other one is a SD card slot. So it has two card slots, whereas the A6700 only has one SD card slot. And to be honest, I would never go back to a camera that only has one card slot. There's just so much use cases for a camera with two card slots. You can shoot photos to one card and video to another card. But not only that, if you wanted to have a backup of your footage that you got from, let's say, your client project or your photo shoot, I set it into simultaneous recording and everything that I take, at photo or video, gets written to both cards. So I always have a backup. I can also use my CF Express Type A cards in my A7 IV, which are more durable, less likely to fail, and I won't be able to use those in the A6700. The A7 IV has a full-size HDMI, whereas the A6700 only has a micro HDMI port, and for someone who uses these HDMI ports, you know just how bad micro HDMI ports are. They damage extremely easy, and the full-size HDMI cables, or using full-size HDMI cables is just going to be better without having to buy a special cable or using an adapter. The A7 IV also has a bigger viewfinder with better resolution. It has extremely fast autofocusing even though it doesn't have AI pose estimation and these other AI features. The body is much bigger which I actually find much more comfortable in my hand. And from what I've seen on the A6700, I would actually prefer the button layout on the A7 IV much better. The A7 IV also has a joystick which you can use to move your autofocusing point which I really really like. So the A6700 is priced at $1,900 Canadian and just after tax this works out to a little over $2,100. Canadian. You can pick up a used A7 IV right now for $500 more than the A6700. So I've been looking on Facebook Marketplace and I can find an A7 IV or buy an A7 IV right now anywhere from $2,500 to $2,700. If I had to choose between these two cameras, I would choose the a7 IV any day. I know it's been almost two years since the a7 IV has come out. I've had it for almost a year now, but I truly think it's one of the best bang for your buck cameras you can buy in terms of features, specs for the price. Full frame, 33 megapixels, better in low light, sharp 4K image, two card slots, full HDMI slot, so much more. Sure, I would love to have the ability to import LUTs on my camera and have AI features and AI powered autofocusing, but these are really the only features that make the A6700 special. If you strip these features away from it, it would actually be a huge downgrade from the a7 IV. With that being said, if you found this video helpful, make sure you click that like button. And if you want to see more content like this, but also support the channel and help me beat the uh, dentist guy on here, make sure you click that subscribe button. I'll see you in the next one.